Hello everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. And now, revelations of mystery and horror in the Helen Clevenger case. Taken from the pages of True Detective Mysteries magazine, the only story of this sensational case, written and authorized by Sheriff Lawrence E. Brown of Funken County, North Carolina. Our story begins on a storm swept night in the factory of the Hotel National, North Carolina. Well, Helen, I think we got back just in time. Yes, Uncle Ray. Look, you can see the storm from my window here. Yes. Lightning racing up the valley. What a sight. The big smoke is in a storm at night. Oh, Uncle Will, I'm so glad you gave me the chance to make this trip. Why shouldn't I show off my pretty New York niece down here in the South, eh? Sir, I've always loved the South, and when you told me I could come to North Carolina this summer, I was thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> Big smoky, top and field. Uh, I'm dairy meeting. Oh, that reminds me. I must write up today's meeting in my diary. I'm sure you're not writing up any big dates in that diary. I'd be jealous. Just listen to Bear Diary. Monday. Left the hotel in Asheville at 9. Attended meetings of dairy farmers. High point with Uncle Will, Professor William F. Clevenger, to you. Ernst Wills with the farmers as a faculty member from State University is meeting with approval wherever we go. All of the dairy... Uh, now, uh, Helen, they just listen to me because I have a pretty 18-year-old niece along who is a nana student at New York University. Uncle Will, the Southern Chivalry has just got you all, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, my dear, I'm glad you're along. You're becoming sweeter to me every day. And you're meeting people and seeing things. And being so happy, I'm afraid. Oh, nonsense, my dear. Hey, this storm is getting worse. Well, good night, Helen. Uh, will you turn in soon? Just as soon as I take a shower, put on the new green silk pajamas, and write in my diary about today. Good. I'll call you at 8 in the morning for breakfast. You'll get on the road by 9.15. All right? Perfect. And here's a big hug for making a girl so happy. <laughs> I hope you'll always be as happy as you are tonight. Well, there's some dreams. You too, Uncle Dolly. Good night. Good night, dear. Good night. <laughs> and now for my beautiful new green silk pajamas and face the bed. Uh oh, must be the right my diary. Anything wrong? Oh, good morning. Uh, no, no, no. There's nothing wrong. Uh, my room is right down the hall, uh, 231. I'm trying to wake my niece up. Take her to breakfast. She's so sound asleep, I can't see the wake her. This is the door lock. Yeah, I'll just try and see. Why? The door isn't locked. I'll just step inside and call. Yes, sir. It's time for breakfast. Yes, that's right. Uh, Ellen, uh, wake up here. Ellen. Ellen. What is it, sir? What's the matter? Oh, look. Look, my niece. She's been murdered. Look at her face. Oh, it looks like... Oh, Helena. Poor little girl. Oh, Helen. 
Your poor father and mother. You, you, you say uh, I'll call the manager. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, call the manager. Call the doctor. Call the police. Oh, Helen, my poor girl. Oh. Oh. Step aside, please. Stand back, stand back. Uh, this way, Sheriff. All right, brother. Just stand by the door here. I'm Sheriff Brown. Are you the manager of this hotel? Yes. Yes, my name is Harmon. I'm the manager. Well, Mr. Harmon, where's the body of the murdered girl? Just inside his daughter. We didn't disturb him. Uh, what time was the body found? About about 8.30, Sheriff. Then why did you wait until nearly 10 o'clock to notify the sheriff's office? I don't know, Sheriff. We were all so excited. I'm so horrified. I... Yeah, it looks pretty bad to me. Who are you trying to protect, Harmon? Oh, nobody. Nobody, I swear, sir. I swear. No, no, no. Pull yourself together, man. Let's see the body. Have you a pass key? Yes, sir. Here it is. What? What? Hey, there's a key in that door already. That's funny. What about it, Harmon? I didn't understand it. That's a masterpiece. There are only 11 masterpieces in the hotel, and we've accounted for every one since... Oh, you have, eh? Well, I'll just take this key, then. Come on in, Slater. You too, Harmon. Hey, look at that body. Shot and beaten to death. Yes, sir. And only 18 years old. Dressed in pajamas. Green silk. Mm. Poor girl was murdered while she was getting ready for bed, Harmon. Who was she? Her name was Helen Clevenger. She was traveling with her uncle, Professor Clevenger. He's next lecturing on uh, dairy farming at the state university. Where is he? In his room, right down the hall. 231. He's quite overcome. Hmm. Hey, here's a diary she was writing in. Come here, Slater. Yes, sir. Help me turn the body over. Yes, sir. There's the bullet hole. Yes, sir, just above her heart. A poor little girl. It's horrible, sir. Huh. Looks like some animal had clawed a face. Luther, look at those cuts. Mm. They're a powerful deep, sir. Yeah, shaped like a crescent or a half circle. It looks mysterious. How about the gun? Did you find it, Harmon? No, sir. There's no trace of a gun. But we found a shell on the bathroom floor. You can see it from here. Get it, Luther. Yes, sir. It's uh, 32, uh, automatic, sir. Oh, yes, I see. Is that her wristwatch here on the chair? Yes, sir. That lamp tree there on the chair at the head of the bed. Did you pull that off in your excitement? Oh, no, no, sir. I didn't touch the thing. The room is just like Professor Clevenger found it when he, when he found the body. There are blood stains on this lamp shade, sir. Yes, bloody fingerprints. The murderer pulled that shade off and, hey, look. Yeah. He must have struck that girl, then tried to turn off the light so nobody could see him finish her off. He couldn't find the light switch, so he unscrewed the bulb, put it on the chair, and there was blood on his hands when he did. It's horrible. Horrible. Harmon, I want to interview every employee of this hotel. Yes. This is one of the foulest crimes that ever stay in the South. You're Professor Clevenger? Yes, sir. This murdered girl was your niece? Yes, sir. She's the daughter of J.F. Clevenger and my brother. And uh, what do you do, Professor Clevenger? Why, I lecture on agricultural subjects. My niece was from New York, a great kid in Staten Island, with a fine opportunity to have her see the South and make contacts, make friends. J.F. Clevenger, great kid in Staten Island. How were the New York police to investigate her death at that end, too, Professor? When did you last see your niece? Last night, just before she went to bed. You were in her room? Why, of course. I had brought her home from the house of some friends. She said she was going to bed just as soon as she wrote up the day in her diary. Did she write in it last night? I suppose so. It was probably the last thing she did before, Professor... When the newspapers find I've been talking to you, they're going to say I accuse you of the murder of your niece. No, no, I I wouldn't have touched the hair of her head. She was so young, so sweet. 
I'm growing closer to it every day. Uh, that'll do, Professor Clevenger. I'll have to hold you for further questioning. You mean jail? I'd like to attend Helen's funeral. I understand. If you keep in touch with us, notify us where you go and what to do. I'd gladly go to jail. I'd gladly give up the rest of my life to help find out who murdered my niece. Mr. Rogers, what about this man you say you saw last night? I I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth. Suddenly I heard a terrible scream. I was in my underwear, but the scream was so awful I rushed out into the hall. Uh, what did you see? Uh, nothing then. Everything was just as quiet as death. Did you notify the hotel office? Uh, no, I, I thought maybe somebody was sick, or maybe some man was having a little trouble with his wife. Uh, you know how it is. Yes, but what about this man? Well, when I got to the hall and realized I was in my underwear, I, I went back into my room for my bathrobe. When I came back to the hall again, I saw a man standing in the doorway of 224, Miss Clevenger's room. What kind of man? Well, it was dark. I, I could only see a muffled figure. Muffled, eh? Did he say anything? Uh, first I said, I wonder what that noise was. And then he said, that's what I have been wondering. Yeah, that's what I've been wondering. Hmm. What did you do then? Huh. I went back into my room. <laughs> You're the night watchman. Yes, sir. My name is Dawn, sir. I'm the night watchman. So I'm a watchman. A young and beautiful girl is murdered, and you didn't even hear a scream. Or did you? I couldn't. I wasn't on that floor. Why not? How is it that you didn't punch your clock on the second floor at 2 o'clock? I don't know. I know. You wanted an alibi to prove you weren't on that floor at the time of the murder. No, no. Honest. I did punch my clock on the second floor. Sure you did, but out of your usual order. Why? Uh, I don't know. I usually start at the top of the hotel and come straight down, floor by floor. But last night you skipped the second floor and came back later. Why? I don't know. You murdered a woman and you wanted an alibi. No. Tom, we'll just lock you up until you can remember a little better. I'll ask you a few questions. Take down any statements, Luther. All right, Sheriff. Hmm. Thank you so much for waiting to end up the concert, Sheriff. Where were you last night? I had nothing to do with this business. What business? We haven't accused you of anything. I was home last night. Sure? Yeah, of course. Then why'd you call up your boarding house today to find out where you were last night? Uh, I forget. I live in a mess of world. There's a world of music. Two reports say you were visiting a girl last night at the hotel. I haven't been near that hotel in six months. What hotel? Nobody's mentioned the hotel. I don't know why I'm here. Are you foolishly? No, Mr. Warner. You'll have to stay with us tonight. <laughs> Brown, here I am. Oh, hello, Professor. When did you get back? Just a little while ago. We buried Helen out in Fletcher, Ohio. Yes, I know. Sheriff, I'm back here to help you. I'm not going to consider myself under arrest, but I'll stay here in jail until doomsday if it will help you clear up this mystery. Oh, we'd, we'd like to have you here. Uh, suppose you wait out there for us. We'll be with you in a little while. I brought up Zone like you said, sir. There's a man named Rogers outside. I don't know if there's anything new on the Clevenger case. What about this? Sure, I'll talk to anybody. Tell him to wait. Right. Sit down, Zone. You ready to tell the truth? I told you everything. Yeah, I know. But now I want the truth. Why didn't you check that second floor when you were supposed to? I did, I tell you. The clock must have been out of order. You're lying, Zorn. You skipped that floor because you're shielding someone. No, no, I don't know anything about it. I swear I don't. Well, as long as you're not ready to tell the truth, back you go, then. I tell you, I don't know. Take your breath, Zorn. You're going down again. Will you give us a story that we can believe? Take him out, Pluto. Right. Come on, Zorn. And say, send in Rogers, will you? 
Oh, Mr. Rogers. Glad to see you. Sit down, won't you? Uh, thanks. I'm leaving Nashville tomorrow, and I thought you might want to speak to me again. About the Clevenge case, you know. Well, to tell the truth, there's little I can tell you now. we got plenty of suspects, but we're no nearer the solution than we were the other day. Mm, too bad. Yeah. You got any ideas, Rogers? Anything new? No, I, I told you everything. Everything about what the muffled figure said and all that. Yes. After you heard the shot, you mean. Uh, yes. You remember how that man said, that's what I was wondering. Yes, I remember. What was that? What did you say, Mr. Rogers? Why, I was repeating... Keep your chair on, Sluter. You heard that before. Rogers was just repeating what he heard the night of the murder. Right after the shot. Yes, I know that. Say it again, will you, Mr. Rogers? Hey, what's the idea of all this? I'll tell you in a minute. Say it again, will you, Rogers? Why, the man said, that's what I was wondering. I thought so. I see it all now, Sheriff. Sheriff, we... Hey, Sluter, what's the matter with you? Are you crazy? Crazy, may I? I just got an idea that's going to help us solve this case. Yeah, and I said I didn't like phony fortune tellers. All right, shoot. What is it? Who have we been looking for? All right, what do you mean? Well, what kind of a man have we been looking for? The murderer of that Clevenger girl, I mean. I still don't get you. No? Well, I'll tell you. We've been looking for white men, haven't we? Well, yes. So we have. Why? Right. I'll tell you why. Because Mr. Rogers quoted that man as saying, that's what I've been wondering. That's why. What in the world are you talking about? Oh, you don't see it yet? Listen, Chef. Rogers, right after the murder, said that the man he saw said, that's what I've been wondering. Now, he tells us the man said, that's what I was wondering. You get it? We've been looking for a white man. We should have been looking for a colored murderer. Only a colored man would say, that's what I was wondering. You get it now? Why, Jules, Sluder, you've got something there. Come on, we've got to look through some wood piles. Come on, then. This is the place. Bud's barbecue. Okay. Quiet. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, boss. Uh, I'm Bill Carey. What you all want? Carey? Are you the manager of this barbecue joint? Yes, sir, boss. That's me. What you all want? I want all the men who work in the hotel in town. Point out Joseph Jones to me. He's an elevator man, and he hangs out here. Now, boys, now, I don't want to get into no trouble. And uh, Jones, he ain't done nothing. What do you want with him? Point him out, Carrie. Yeah. Uh, here he is, boys. That third man is sitting at the counter. Jones, you're under arrest. Please, boys, I swear I ain't done nothing. Please, I ain't done nothing. Careful, men. Careful. We want to surprise them. No! Come up to your hands, boys. Well, that's a nice little game you boys are having. I want a colored boy named Clarence Griffin. Pantry boy at the hotel. Where is he? I'll stand, Griffin. Griffin? You're wanted in the Clevenger murder. No, the murder. I didn't do it, white man. I was... Luda, how are Griffith and Jones standing up in jail? Uh, mighty cautious, Sheriff. Mighty cautious. They haven't spilled anything yet. I set up a dictograph in their cell, like you said, and I listened all afternoon. Well, those three boys just won't talk. I thought we took them because the manager said they'd talk the most. Yeah, they'll talk in time. You will go up to the depot in the morning and meet those New York officers I sent for. Bring them straight to the jail. Well, good six grass legs, Heck, Quinn. Glad, Tom. I think we'll take some new wrinkles back to New York. You men help me break this Clevenger case, and you can have anything I've got. Those boys are not sold on the car at the breakfast. Let's listen. Turn on that amplifier switch. 
That's so. What do you want to come to? You know something you ain't tell Yeah, well, I don't know nothing. That girl was shot. You know any of the boys who had a revolver? Good, Ed. Now we're getting somewhere. Revolver? I don't know nobody in which one. Just two. Oh, you better talk. They done from New York to take you down there. They make you talk. Magazine and transcribed by the Trans American Broadcasting System. 